All right, welcome to our virtual class. This class will actually, I'm combining two classes into one. We're going to go over the story of Joseph. This will be our last class for this quarter, and we'll get a new set of memory verses. So we're covering the book of Genesis this quarter. All right, let's uh, pray. Let's do our memory verses. Lord God, we thank you for your kindness and mercy to us in Christ Jesus. Uh, we thank you for the book of Genesis that tells us our origins, tells us uh, the origins of your covenant people through Abraham, through Isaac and Jacob, uh, and then on to Jesus. We thank you for the story of Joseph that we're going to go over today. Please help us uh, realize how it points to your son, Jesus and what we need to know and what we need to meditate on. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, let's do our last set of memory verses uh, for this quarter. Genesis 1.27 So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Genesis 3.15, which is the first mention of the gospel in scripture. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Genesis 15, 6, which shows justification by faith alone in uh, the Old Testament. And he believed the Lord, speaking of Abraham, and he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. And Genesis 50, 20, which shows how God works together all things for good for those who are called and by his name. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Okay, so let's, that verse comes in the story of Joseph. That last verse. Let's uh, let's. I'm going to go over this in a, a sweep. What I want you to understand is so the, the you sh should already be familiar with the story, but if you're not, that's okay. Um, Joseph was one of uh, um, Jacob's twelve sons. He was one of the two sons of. I believe it's Rachel who um, uh, that he lo loved. That was the wife he loved more. Uh, it was uh, Jacob and Benjamin, I believe, or um, uh, Joseph and and Gen Benjamin. And Joseph gets sold into slavery into Egypt, and that um, is what sets up. Uh, their rescue from a famine and ultimately sets up the Passover and the Exodus story and Moses and everything is in God's plan. Jacob lived in the land of his father's sojournings in the land of Canaan. All right, so then we get some generations. So Joseph was a dreamer. So he had dreams and God had given him the gift of interpretation of dreams. You'll see this in Daniel too. Daniel had that ability, and he dreams that his father and mother and uh, all his uh, siblings are going to bow down to him and serve him, or at least bow down to him. So that uh, made them pretty upset. Uh, his brothers upset, so they faked his death, sold him into slavery, uh, into Egypt, by some uh, Midianites. Reuben was somewhat against this, um, and kind of just played along, and then was going to go rescue him. They told Jacob that he had died, he had the, that coat of many colors, and they dipped it in an animal's blood, and his father was very upset. So, meanwhile, the Midians 
Midianites, Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard. So God is going to be looking out for Joseph, and through that, uh, looking out for all of Israel. Uh, one thing I should mention is that Joseph, we use in, in theology, there's a term called typology. And what typology means is you're seeing, for lack of a better term, pictures or representations of uh, specifically Jesus. That's the type of typology we're interested in. And this typology is, um, what you see from Joseph is that Joseph figuratively dies, he's sold into slavery, uh, he will eventually, quote-unquote, come back to life. Uh, he, his brethren, uh, <coughs> uh, sell him for money. Uh, so in typology, not every detail has to match, but this is, you see the sufferings of Joseph. Um, what you see in there is kind of a, in big picture, a, a picture of, of Jesus, Jesus is the greater reality. Joseph is kind of the lesser reality that points points to um, points to Jesus. All right. So Potiphar's wife uh, tries to seduce him, uh, and he gets thrown in jail. But before that, we saw his master. We were talking about Potiphar saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. This is what we're saying, that the Lord is looking after Joseph. So Joseph found favor in his sight, and that's through God's blessing, and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all he had. So after he's thrown in prison, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him fa favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So even though he was in prison, he had favor there. And the keeper of the prison put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners who were in prison. Whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. All right, so what we're seeing here is that God is preparing Joseph to rescue his people. He's putting him in a position to rescue his people, and it takes, it probably, I think, it's, I heard someone say 13 years or so that God was doing this, and Joseph was suffering, but also finding favor at the same time, and he didn't know why. He, he didn't understand God's plan, and that's why we go back to our memory verse, is that what the brothers meant for evil against Joseph, God meant it for good to bring about that many should be people should be kept alive but joseph didn't know this so there was two people a cupbearer and a baker uh for pharaoh and one joseph has they have a dream and joseph interprets it and one of in everything came about according to inter interpretation one of them was executed and one of them was restored to their former position and then uh, Pharaoh starts having a dream, and I forget how many years it was, but uh, maybe it was three years? Three years. After two whole years, there you go. Uh, Pharaoh dreamed, had a dream of an upcoming uh, famine. They were going to have seven good years and seven bad years. And uh, of famine, that's when they, you don't have enough food to eat in a region. And that is when the cupbearer, who was, uh, who was restored in chapter 40, uh, didn't remember uh, Joseph, even though he promised, and he uh, feels bad about it here. I remember my offensive today. So Pharaoh called Joseph. Joseph interprets the dream, and then basically... Joseph becomes the regent, or the sort of like a prime minister. So he's in charge, main person in charge in Egypt, except for Pharaoh. Um, since God has shown you all this, there's none so discerning and wise as you. 
So Joseph was 30 year old, years old when he entered in the service of the king of Egypt. And uh, he gets, uh, I believe he gets a wife and kids while in Egypt. Um, all right, so getting to the brother. So in the story, uh, the famine hits. Joseph um, is in charge due to his and be God blessing him with the interpretation of dreams. He's able to devise a plan to store up food for the bad times. So they hear there, there's food in Egypt. Uh, they go down to Egypt and he tests his brothers and his brothers um, by giving them more Benjamin more, who's the youngest brother. And uh, they don't become, uh, they don't become jealous. Basically, they show uh, repentance. There's a back and forth. There's play acting. Highly recommend um, uh, the story. Eventually, it, word gets back to to um, uh, uh, Israel, Jacob, and he comes down. There's he blesses his sons. There's prophecies before he dies. And um, oh, one thing I should mention about the seven years of famine, uh, seven years of uh, uh, is that because they had the grain stored up, they sell it. The Bible tells us this is how Pharaoh uh, came into possession of all the property because uh, they basically people made themselves slaves in order to eat. Uh, essentially slaves. So that's how Pharaoh got total control. So you can see that God in his providence is setting up the Exodus account even uh, way back when uh, for his glory. And then when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil we did to him. So now that his father's dead, they're kind of worried. So they, you know, they want to, they forgive, and uh, they want him to forgive them and stuff like that. Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, "Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today." That's our memory verse, and that's why we put it in here as one of your memory verse. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. There's so much I've skipped over here. Uh, there's so much good material and life lessons. Know that God is in control. God takes care of his people. Even through rough times, there's a purpose for it. Uh, their God is looking out for his glory, which is tied up into taking care of us. Um, know that nothing bad happens without a reason and that we can trust God uh, with our concerns uh, down to the smallest things. And um, I guess that's it for uh, this lesson. Uh, definitely, this is we covered 13 chapters so this is just a cursory overview remember the big picture remember that joseph points to jesus that god is in control and this is part of god's redemptive story bring it into the uh, big picture that god is saving his covenant people ultimately uh, to bring about the messiah and the salvation of the world Okay, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for sending Jesus into the world as we learn this, at least initially, uh, for the initial people who watch this around the Christmas time. So we thank you, Lord, for having types and shadows in the Old Testament that we can look at to remind us of Jesus, so we can learn about Jesus, and, and so we can love you, and uh, may your Holy Spirit just be with the children, illuminating their hearts, and making these stories uh, come to life uh, to them spiritually. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, next uh, quarter is we start with Exodus. God bless.